night like uh, Joshua when he was about at that point to take Israel, uh, Israel into the promised land the angel of the Lord came to him and said to him prepare yourself consecrate the people because tomorrow I'll do wonders I'll lead you on a way that you've never been before so I'm saying to you that God is taking his church on a new way where we've never been before. And we can expect the glory of God to come in and to change our lives. I want you to, tonight, to see tonight as a night of consecration, where we come and consecrate ourselves to our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Last night, and I think over the last couple of weeks, we've studied the tabernacle, and we've learned more about the tabernacle, and about saving faith, and also repentance, and tonight we touch on sanctification, but the focus is more on cons to consecrate ourselves, to rededicate ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest. Can you say amen? amen. So... We'll see how it goes tonight, but at the end, uh, Pastor Harold will come and give us uh, some instructions. He's good at that, so he'll come and give us some instructions how we're going to do it tonight. Uh, I'm going to start off by showing you a short, I just want to show you a short video clip. Uh, maybe some of you will still remember it in 1987, uh, there was a little girl and she fell into a water well. Her name, her name is Jessica. Can you still remember that? In Texas. Happened in Texas. Her parents were very young. They went to visit somebody. And the mother just went inside for something. Little one walked. And the next thing, she fell into a well. 22 feet down into the well. She was stuck. Her one leg went past her head. And she got stuck in the well. She was 18 months old. Desperate situation for a little one. And it took something like 58 hours to get her out of there. There was like all over the world, there was a cry out. Everybody I know in those days, it was like on television all the time. And all over the world, people were just gripped by this. And they knew they had limited time to get this baby out of that well to save her, and uh, there were miners and people from all over, people were sending money just to help, and people were sending machinery just to get her out, and it was, it was a, a huge, a huge rescue effort to get her out, so I'm going to show you a little, just the last part of it, you can go and watch it, but I want you tonight to understand something when I show you this video. Because there is a parallel. There is a parallel. If I say to you tonight that the word says in the book of Hebrews, the Father is not concerned about the angels, but he's concerned about the offspring of Abraham. And the reason why is the angels are always with him. The angels are always in his presence. But we are the offspring of Abraham. And it's all about our souls. It's all about coming home. Getting to the presence, into the presence of God. So, let's see. We're right here where things begin to happen. The rescue effort... 57 hours. Yet another hand signal. They're obviously going into the well, inching into the well. Got the cable. 
got somebody down in the hole. Rodney, does it appear to you that the uh, the red rope that you mentioned before that would be connected to the backboard that, that she would be strapped to, is does that appear to you it, it's still down the shaft? I think so, Mike. Uh, it, it, the color is changing on us, and it's hard to see the color because it, it, it looks like it has been down in the well and it's got that dust on it, but I believe that's what you're looking at right there. Uh, not, no longer a cable, but a rope uh, that would be attached to that uh, board. I don't know. A board or a skid. It was a small. It was a small board, not not, not very large at all. Something that you would uh, uh, tend to see in, in mountain climbing or something like that. Uh, that an injured person in that area uh, would be brought down from in a repelling situation or something. Right. Well, Mike, they, that is the cable that they've been luring people in and out of, so whoever is in that well, that's what they're attached to, and we believe the the, uh, the rope, of course, attached to the board. You know, Rodney, I, I don't think uh, anyone at home can miss the fact that, that these guys are are so tensed and so and so expectant here. You, you can just see it in, in the way that they're they're all acting. They're riveted to the to this hole and, and watching what's going on and, and they've all put their hearts into this for so long uh, you can imagine the emotion uh, as you can see mike they're are they bringing the cable and rope up the at this cable time? and rope both appear to be coming up out of the well yes it does and very slowly but they both appear to be coming up at the same time which could indicate that uh and we and we do don't want to read anything too much into this but uh which could mean that the paramedic and the board which is uh to be strapped to the paramedic uh, are coming up at the same time. Rodney, the, the, the cable uh, would probably be what's connected to the to, paramedic if that's what's happening, and then the rope to the board as well, right? Right, and uh, hopefully the board is, uh, we've been told the board would be strapped to the paramedic as well, but I'm sure that is just a lifeline to that board. Right. But they're both coming up out of the well at the same time. You can see it moving. Both the rope and the cable are coming up at the same uh, inch yeah. per foot at the same time. Rodney, I think I'm hearing the crowd react yes, back there, too, the as crowd. well. Yes, it's getting louder. They've We've got her. Got We're getting it. the indication. Yeah. We're getting the indication. Oh, We're seeing it. Yeah, Thank they're excited. God. Yeah. Thank God We're seeing it. There she is. There she is. There she is. There she is. And she, her <laughs> eyes are open. Jessica. You can oh, see her eyes God. open. Oh. Bless her She's blinking. Bless her heart. She's blinking. eight hours, exactly. Thank God. 58 hours. Excellent. Oh my That's God. wonderful. Thank God for that. For all the people that have worked so hard. There you see her. She owes her life to so many great people who have worked so hard to save it. What the biggest sigh of the Yeah, we can Wonder. hear the crowd. You can hear it. She's wiping her eyes. Look at her. Hear it. 58 hours down in the dark hole. Is that a beautiful sight? Oh, it is. It certainly is. Oh. Oh. All right. And the doctor's now moving in the... Uh, uh, there we see. There she's being taken doctor. to the end. There you go. There she Mike and Becky, we will not be very, uh, with you very much longer. We're going to be moving the live truck there, as you see. The right. So you can imagine the anguish of the parents. You can just imagine how difficult it was for them to experience this because they didn't know what was going to happen. And they were, you can just think, little girl, 22 feet down, stuck in this well. And uh, I know there was, if I remember correctly, there was a, a very rich person that uh, he had all the mining equipment, and he sent a machine, and they sunk a well, a shaft, right next to the well right next to the and they sunk a second shaft and somebody had to go down go and rescue that little baby and that little baby is also you and me in our fallen state fallen into the power of sin fallen from our place 
from the presence of God. And we don't always realize in what desperate situation we are. We don't always realize the battle that is going on for the salvation of our souls. We don't always realize the price that it costs. And the plan and the purpose of God to really sink a shaft down to earth, send His Son, come down. Come and rescue us. Pull us out. Because we cannot save ourselves. We couldn't save ourselves. So last night we spent some time at the outer court. Tonight we want to move into the holy place. And we want to experience... Something about the holy place tonight. And the theme of the message tonight is come to your high priest. Because we need to understand that Jesus didn't only die for us. He, he also lives for us. He's not only our Savior, but He's also our High Priest. So His ministry didn't end when He ascended into heaven. Because the rescue effort is not completed yet. It's what we don't sometimes understand. We think, we come forward, we pray a prayer, we surrender our lives to Jesus. And that's not wrong. But that's the beginning of the salvation of our soul. Because the salvation of our soul is a process. And it's not going to end until we're at home. Until we're there, back at home. So our part in this is faith, is to believe, and not to lose our faith in Him. He is the Savior. He is the one that's doing the rescue. He paid the price for us. But He's not going to be happy until we're there with Him. So he's, there's a burning desire in His heart. There is an urgency in His heart. As we are coming into the end times, to get the nation saved, if I look at the things happening in the Middle East and all over the world, the signs of the times and so on, I know there's an urgency to get people saved, to bring them into the kingdom. So tonight, I want to call you to come to the high priest, to come to your high priest, to come and rededicate yourself, to come and consecrate yourself once more in the holy place to your high priest. Because let me say to you, your high priest is busy every day in the holy place and in the most holy place to intercede for you and for me. He lives for us. He died for us, but He also lives for us to bring us into the fullness of His glory. He doesn't want us to, to lose our salvation. He wants us to believe with that same faith that we came to Him, that saving faith. Now let me say to you tonight, saving faith 
saving faith. If you have received saving faith, that same saving faith, the evidence of that is sanctification. If you have received saving faith, that faith will empower you to come out of the power of sin. It will help you to move forward in your relationship with the Lord. And that's that same saving faith that will bring you into the presence of God. That is the faith that Apostle Paul speaks about. And that faith is to put our trust in Him who started a good work but will also finish the good work. Can you say amen? He's the high priest. Now, if you look at that beautiful picture there, it's really... The high priest standing at the Ark of the Covenant and looking down because we are down. We are below still. But we are ascending spiritually by the power of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> he has given us His Holy Spirit to bring us up to where He is. Amen. Are you with me? He has gone before us to prepare a place for us. That place is the glory of God. It's in the presence of God. That's that. To be restored completely. But until we are there, until we are home in that place, we cannot be slack in our faith. We cannot be of God in our faith. We have to hang on to Him. Can you say amen? We have to depend upon Him. Now what happens to us if we begin to lose our faith? We fall back into our own efforts. We fall back into our own righteousness. We fall back into trying to get ourselves saved. Now tonight I want to spend time here with the, in the holy place. Now I want you to read the scripture with me being in the holy place. We read the scripture from the holy place. We think about the holy place. And what we see here is here is the altar of incense. There is the golden lampstand. And on that side is the table with the shoe bread. Is that right? Show bread. Shoe bread. Show bread. Amen. So in the holy place... There is no natural light. There is only the light of the Spirit of God. It is speaking of the revelation of the Holy Spirit. If you take out the light, it will be completely dark inside. But it's the light of the Spirit that enlightens the Word of God. That side, the Word of God, there. It's the light, the revelation of the Holy Spirit that brings the Word alive, that makes the Word of God, the Logos Rim Rema for us. Because otherwise, without the light of the Spirit, the Word is only Logos, letter. And what does the letter do? Letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So it's by the light of the Holy Spirit. That's why I say we need the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we're here tonight. That's why we're coming tomorrow night, to be empowered once more by the Holy Spirit. Because it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that we are getting transformed. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Word of God comes into our hearts. When we read the Word of God, when we meditate on the Word of God, when we memorize the Word of God, when we study the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will come and the Holy Spirit will bring revelation through the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will enlighten the Word so that we will understand the Word. He will make the Word alive to us. He uses the Word inside of us to sanctify us. He sanctifies us by the truth of the Word. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Is that right? That's what Jesus said. He said, Father, I pray, sanctify them by your Word. Sanctify them by your Word. The Word of God is the truth. Can you say amen? amen? Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth. 
So we, need, we get to know Jesus in the outer court as the way. There's no other way. There's no other door. There's only one door to salvation. There's only one Savior that went right down. To come right down. Listen, Jesus went right down. Passed the cross right into the, into the hell. To get us safe. To get us out of hell. So it's by the truth of the word of God. He's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. He's life. Life Zoe. Not the life of Adam. Not the man kind of life. The God kind of life. He is eternal life. He who has the Son has got life. Amen. Who, he who does not have the Son has not got life. Jesus is life. He is the resurrection and the life. So in the holy place, what is necessary for us to understand, and that's why I'm saying to you tonight, is come tonight and realize that our high priest, his ministry is not just to, to save us, but to transform us, to sanctify us. Listen, that little girl, when she came out of that well, she was hurt. She was hurt. She had to go to hospital. It took a long time. And afterwards, you can go and look. I didn't go through everything, but it took a long time for her to recover. She was not only scarred physically, she was also emotionally scarred. She's, I think, about 30 years old now. But she, she went through a lot of things. You can just imagine the trauma that she experienced down in that well, 22 feet down. Now, I can tell you, it's much worse to be lost we don't realize the damage that's been done to our souls. We don't even begin to understand the power of sin, the destructive power of sin in our lives. We, don't, we can't even begin to understand the power of how destructive sin was in our lives. We don't even begin to understand that. Now, for Jesus to work out our sanctification, to bring us through. Now, let me just put it this way. You don't misunderstand me. He went ahead of us. Jesus paved the way for us. He went ahead of us already as a man. Can you say amen? Jesus came to earth as a man. He died as a man. He rose from the grave as a man. He's the firstborn. Of the new creation. Amen. So he paved the way for us. Back to the Father. He poured out his spirit. To help us. So we can find the way. And we can. Progress. And be sanctified. And be restored. And come back to the glory. That God has intended us from the beginning. Not only spirit, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Do you know that your body is important to God? Yeah. Your body is very important to God because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says we need to honor God with our bodies. We need to, have, to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to Him. Now, in the outer court, we do that. We surrender our bodies there. But we know that we move into the holy place. And this is what the word says. But you are a chosen generation. Number one. You are a chosen generation. I'll come back to that. Number two. You are a royal priesthood. Number three. You are a holy nation. Number four. You are his own special people. 
Why? So that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. You've been called out of darkness into His marvelous light. You've been called, you see, in the natural world, in the world that we're living in, there's darkness. Why is there darkness? Because there's no light. There's no revelation. Okay, they're just going to finish that quickly, Gerard, because they're all looking at you now. All right. So, in the holy place, there is light, the light of the Spirit. It is revelation knowledge. It is the light of the Holy Spirit that comes in our hearts that gives us light, that reveals Jesus to us, that reveals Many things to us. I'm going to speak about that now. He says, number one, you are a chosen generation. Won't you say to somebody next to you, you are chosen. You're part of a chosen generation. What does that mean? You are. You are. If you belong to Jesus, you are the offspring of Abraham. You need to understand this. If you belong to Jesus, you are the offspring of Abraham, the father of faith. Because Abraham received righteousness. Why? Because of faith. So you are the offspring of Abraham. And because you are the offspring of Abraham, you are the heirs. There is an inheritance that needs to be taken hold of. You've got an inheritance. You've got eternal life. You've got the glory of God. You've got all the rewards in heaven. Can you say amen? amen. Listen, you are part of a chosen generation. A generation that has come since Abraham. A generation of believers. Generation that, that has been saved by faith. That received righteousness by faith. Not by works, but by faith. By believing, putting our trust, our confidence in Him, in Jesus. Secondly, you are a royal priesthood. Now, if you are in the holy place, you can understand that in the holy place, there is ministry taking place. There is a table with shew bread. So the priest would daily, they would minister. They would replace the bread. Amen. They would make sure that there, there's oil in the lamb. They would make sure that here at the brazen altar, that uh, the incense was uh, there every day. So the priest had a job. They had a ministry in the holy place. Now the same with you and me. We've got a ministry in the temple of God, which is the body of Christ. Can you say amen? There's a ministry. If you belong to Christ, you need to understand there's a ministry. Somewhere there's a ministry. Somewhere in the body of Christ, there's a ministry for you. In the house, in this house, there's a ministry for you. It could be sharing the Word of God. It could be teaching the Word of God. It could be worshiping here at the, at the altar of incense, like the worshipers. They, they minister here at the altar of incense and they, they bring up incense before the, the throne of God and they're inviting us all and say, come into His presence, come into His presence. Can you say amen? This is a ministry. Or you could be standing, minister here at the lamp, bringing revelation, prophetic word, words of knowledge, whatever God reveals. You could be a prophet or in the prophetic ministry. The Bible says here that we are a holy nation. What does that mean, to be a holy nation? There are many nations in this world, we know. But he calls us a holy nation. One of the translations said you are a peculiar people. <laughs> that means we are different. <laughs> we are different from all the other nations. We do things the other way around. We are strange. 
To the world, it looks foolish. Coming together on a Sunday night or to like tonight, on the Monday night, to come and sit in a building, to sing, sing some songs, lift up your hands. Crazy. From the world's perspective. Clapping hands for what? There's no sports there. Singing to what? A God you can't even see. Why don't you just put a, some God there that you can see? Some holy cow. You see, it doesn't make sense. Christianity doesn't make sense to the world. It's like the tabernacle. If you look for, from the outside, it, looks, it doesn't look good. It was covered in animal skins. But inside, it was shining. Inside, it was gold. Inside, it was beautiful. Inside, there was, there was the glory of God. But from the outside, it didn't look so nice. Not something you wanted. Not something you desired. But come inside. And come taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Once you've tasted from the Lord, you say, by world, I'm not interested in you anymore. I want Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 So it says here that we are a holy nation. That means we have been separated from the other nations. We are separated. We are separated for Him. We belong to Jesus. We don't belong to the world in nations. We are, we, we are part of His nation. Amen. Then it, it also says that we are His own special people. That means we belong to Him. We are His prime position. He possesses us. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Jesus. He paid the price for us. Amen. So we are His. We don't belong to anybody else. We only belong to Jesus. We don't belong to the world. So in the holy place where we are now, what does Jesus do? The high priest will work out, he will sanctify us by his word. Sanctify us. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he will keep on moving us forward. If I'm saying forward, I'm speaking forward to our destiny, speaking forward to, uh, to the glory of God, moving us all the time by sanctification, bringing us closer. He's working. Listen, our soul, your soul, my soul is so complex. You can't even begin to understand it. It's so complex. There are so many memories in our souls. Just like, it's just amazing. We can't even go there. It's so complex. But Jesus knows everything about us. Can you say amen? So he knows how to heal us. He knows how to sanctify us. He knows how to deal with our lives. And that happens in the holy place. It's a place of transformation. It's a place of sanctification. It is where our faith works and where His power works. It's where His grace, His grace works in us. And he's, and he's helping us all the time. Helping us to grow into spiritual maturity. To regain. To, gain, to get back what Adam lost. It's a process. That's why. That's why we need to have an intimate relationship with the Word of God. We, have to, we must have an intimate relationship of worship. We must have an intimate relationship uh, with the Holy Spirit every day. Because every day Jesus will help us. He will transform us. He will, he will take us. And he will sanctify us. But if we slip back in our faith, we pull back from Him. Are you still here with me tonight? Is it too difficult? Amen. So let's close. Yeah, in the book of Hebrews 2 verse 11, Jesus the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are from the same family. Say to somebody next to you, you are from the same family. We are from the same family. So the Bible says we are from the same family. We are a holy generation. We are the offspring of Abraham. We are the family of God. So he's not ashamed... He's not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. 
Now here in uh, Hebrews 7 it says, But because He remains forever, He is the high priest forever. Say forever. forever. Jesus is our high priest forever. He is our high priest forever. He is not, Pastor Marcel mentioned it last night, He is not from the Levitical priesthood, He is from the priesthood of Melchizedek, which is in forever. It's a royal priesthood. He's never going to die. He died and He rose again. He's never going to die. So He always lives. The Bible says He always lives to make intercession for us. He lives for that. Even when we are unfaithful, He is still faithful. Because He's serious to save us. He loves us. He wants us back to the Father. He wants, us, he wants to bring us home. To the Father. That's what His desire is. That is the desire of the Holy Spirit. Is to bring us back to our Father. To restore us. To bring us back to the fullness of glory. That's why Jesus uh, uh, is our high priest. The word says here, Therefore He is able to save completely those who come to God through Him. Since He always lives to intercede for them. For this is the kind of high priest we need. Holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. So he is the perfect, say perfect. perfect. He's the perfect high priest. And he has got a compassion for his people. Why? Because he knows. Listen, what would you think? When they brought that little baby out there, and the mother or the dad came and gave her a hiding, what would we think? So we need to understand something about this. There's blood on the mercy seat. Did you know that? There is blood on the mercy seat. Tomorrow night, we look at the Ark of the Covenant. There is blood, always blood on the mercy seat. There is always blood on the mercy seat. When God looks, He sees the blood. On the mercy seat. And there's always a high priest. The high priest. In the holy place. In the most holy place. Always ministering to the Father. Interceding for us. Reminding the Father. Showing His blood. Not the blood of animals. But His blood. He made one sacrifice. Once and for all. For all our sins. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So I'm saying to you tonight, if you understand the holy place and you move through the holy place and you believe in the blood and the power of the blood, you will enter in to the most holy place. You'll begin to enter into the glory of God. You'll begin to experience the glory of God. Can you say amen? amen. Does it mean you are perfect? Not in yourself, but in Christ you are perfect already. In Christ, you are perfect already. But Jesus is working it out. What I'm saying to you tonight, we need to hang on to Jesus. Listen, we need to hang on to Jesus with all our might and strength. No, with our faith. We need to hang on to Him because He's going to pull us out and He's going to bring us back to the Father. Amen. Let's stand.